firstly, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Maital Rosh. I am a director of business development at the Freemind Group. Um, and and I'll, I'll start by saying uh, that on behalf of the entire team and myself, we hope you and your loved ones are well. As I'm sure you're aware, uh, these alarming new developments uh, are uh, not simple, uh, to, to say the least. And we see that there are a lot of specific funding opportunities that are being issued literally every day uh, in the hopes of, of either curing or diagnosing the disease in a much more uh, efficient way. And, and that is what we'll be talking about today. So uh, I'll start by saying that these funding opportunities that we'll talk about cover the entire spectrum of, uh, of, of the R&D process, starting with discovery all the way up to phase three clinical trials. And we like to divide uh, the funding opportunities that we see into three major groups. First one is early stage, um, really high risk, high reward type of projects, very little preliminary data, if any at all, is required at this point. And the awards typically start with $200,000 all the way up to about half a million. Next group is for projects that are still in the preclinical stage, but much more advanced or early stage clinical. Typically, you will have to present some kind of proof of concept, preliminary data. And, and these grants are, of course, uh, larger, half a million to about $3 million. Third group is advanced projects. Uh, big government contracts, big clinical trials typically start with $3 million and uh, most of them don't even have a budget cap. So the sky is, is definitely uh, the limit. Um, and we will talk about three submission types or, or funding routes that we uh, typically see with these sources. The first one is solicited applications those applications address a specific area of interest. Um, typically, it's, it's easy to know if you're compliant because the scope is very clear. Second kind is the unsolicited or investigator initiated opportunities. We find our mechanisms, R21, R01, SBARs, or STTRs as, as a part of uh, these solicitations typically. And here, the challenge is, is to try and establish interest prior to submission. The third one is broad agency announcements or BAAs. These are large scale solicitations address a wider area of research. And uh, unlike grants, we see that there are slight differences. So for example, although the, uh, the research area is wide, we do find specific topics. The, the work itself is very goal-oriented and uh, more hands-on compared to grants in terms of the involvement of the funding agency. Uh, typically, they are very large and, and definitely worth it, uh, but these slight differences are, are definitely something to think about. So we'll, we'll start with the NIH, and, and just to be on the safe side, I'll mention that the NIH is a combination of 27 institutes and centers. Obviously, the one that we'll be talking about today is the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, or NIAID. It is one of the largest institutes within the NIH. They just got a pretty significant budget increase, and I would not be surprised if they would uh, stream additional funds at this point. And we do see that all three funding routes are available through NIAID. Firstly, the investigator initiated opportunities, SBARs or SCTRs, and these are for domestic companies doing all the work in the US. Um, second type is R21s and R01s. These are open to companies from all over the world. R21s are for early stage works, work. R01s are for more advanced. And uh, I will not go into specifics when we're talking about these unsolicited opportunities, uh, just uh, to make sure that we're focused. If you are interested in hearing some more about it, please check out our YouTube channel that just has a lot of information and, and different 
uh, webinars. Second type is solicited opportunities. We find a lot of those with NIAD, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, in a second. And we also have the NIAID BAA for more, more robust projects. So let's start. Um, so when we're talking about solicited opportunities, what I recommend doing is going into the NIH search engine. I added the link here below. Um, you can just click NIAID, screen the ones that you're interested in, and really make sure that you're submitting to the most compliant, the, the most suitable opportunity where you're the most compliant. Um, and I chose one opportunity to, to talk about here today that was just announced and, and is, of course, incredibly relevant. Uh, and yeah, so um, these are the results that uh, you can see, uh, 166, and, and again, I, I picked one. So. Uh, this is for partnerships for countermeasures against select pathogens. This is an R1 type of grant, and they do not allow for clinical trials. The scope is basically to fund preclinical development of lead candidate therapeutics, vaccines, and related countermeasures against select NIDE emerging infectious diseases or pathogens. The application is due on June 29th which means that this is definitely an, an ideal time to start preparing towards it. The, the award is up to seven, $750,000 per year for up to five years. And in addition to that, you can increase the amount that you're asking for year one if you do need to require to uh, purchase some equipment that is specifically designed to the project that, that is planned. Um, the second one I want to address is the NIAID BAA, the Broad Agency Announcement. These are the topics that are relevant uh, to us here. Uh, so you can see they have all kinds of, uh, you know, vaccine uh, candidates and they have diagnostics. I will point out that unlike grants with government contracts and, and with Broad Agency Announcements, we see that there is a specific budget set aside for each one of these topics. So I definitely recommend going into uh, the solicitation, reading it very carefully and, and making sure that firstly, the amount and the duration of the project are suitable to you uh, and, and that you understand exactly what they wanna see. The awards are up to $5 million per contract and the submission deadline is April 9th which is uh, literally now. So I, I, would, I would definitely uh, start if, if you think that this is, uh, this is the way to go for you and, and your team. And another thing that's very interesting, and this is again with the NIH, we see that they added uh, an opportunity for awardees who have an active grant. And they're basically proposing two options if you do think that the work that you do could be beneficial in this uh, specific coronavirus crisis. So uh, first option is if you see that the grant that you do is definitely within the scope of what they're looking for now, but in order to be a part of, uh, of this effort, you need additional funds. So you can ask them to increase the grant's budget. Um, there is no budget cap. If, if, that is, uh, if that is the option that you're uh, going after, which is obviously an advantage, and, and that's the solicitation. Option number two is for awardees that are doing something that is not within their scope, but would like to change the scope of the grant to make sure that it is suitable for, uh, for the coronavirus-related uh, work. So they can definitely uh, submit this, uh, this request, it is called administrative supplement. And uh, for both of these opportunities, I'll just add that the duration of the award is not extended. So if you have two years remaining, you have to complete the work, even the additional work within that period of time. So make sure that you are aware. Um, next up, the National Science Foundation, the NSF. They have an SBIR program that is very relevant. 
So uh, their SBARs are divided into two, phase one, which is up to $250,000 and phase two up to 1 million. They have rolling deadlines, so you can submit as soon as you're ready. And the review process is comprised of a pitch and full application. You start by giving them a very short summary of your planned work and, inv and get invited hopefully to submit the full thing. Um, and they just added a topic encouraging coronavirus applicants via existing funding opportunities. Next up, BARDA, the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority. So uh, BARDA is the government agency in charge of protecting U.S. citizens from any type of biological, chemical, nuclear scenario. Obviously, this is one of these times. And uh, they are soliciting proposals for medical countermeasures that diagnose, treat, or protect against the coronavirus. Uh, you can either do it through the full BARDA opportunity or through an initiative which is a part of BARDA called Drive Easy for early stage work compared to the, the full BARDA contract uh, and uh, hopefully an expedited uh, review process. Um, so I also say that with BARDAs, you also need to hand in a summary. It is called a white paper. You're sending it over to them and they uh, review. I can tell you that because they are very, uh, very concerned and, and, and definitely putting in a lot of resources into this, the submission uh, instructions and the portals change literally daily. Uh, so make sure that uh, you are up to date. Typically, you can just submit the white paper. In this case, if you want them to take a look and, at what you plan on doing and give you some feedback and direction, you can even do something called a tech watch, which is uh, a meeting with them, obviously done online these days. Um, and you could just ask for a specific coronavirus related tech watch. So let's talk about BARDA topics. Um, as you can see, they have several diagnostics topics, uh, COVID-19 vaccine, COVID-19 therapeutics, respiratory productive devices, uh, ventilators and advanced manufacturing technologies. All the submissions are done through BARDA's coronavirus portal and, and you have uh, the link right here. And, and of course, uh, I, I did not say this, but you'll get the, the deck as soon as we're done here. Um, and, and of course, it is important to note that uh, BARDA applications do not have a budget cap. So the challenge here is to make sure that you're um, justifying the amount that you're asking them to give you. Secondly, we have the BARDA Drive Easy, Streamline BARDA Easy, uh, reviewing submissions for development of funding uh, for coronavirus molecular diagnostics. So these are the topics. They definitely have some diagnostics topics, but also COVID-19 vaccine and advanced manufacturing technologies as well. And here, uh, firstly, they offer rapid review, which is uh, definitely very important. And, and I'll mention that due to the fact that BARDA awards are so large, uh, the review process is a bit longer. So here they're basically offering a leaner version with a rapid review process and a smaller grant of $750,000 per application. Um, although, by the way, BARDA is, is doing their very best to, to expedite things, this is uh, in a way a slimmer version. Next agency to mention is MTEC, Medical Technology Enterprise Consortium. They issued a few pre-announcements, meaning we don't know much, but we do have the topics and, and that's what we'll be discussing today. So uh, point of care diagnostic that provides rapid and accurate determination of exposure to COVID-19, um, prophylactic and therapeutics that prevent and or treat in a rapid manner, potentially in a non-hospital ho hospital environment. And uh, they are also encouraging people to submit things having to do with repurposing of FDA approved drugs and biologics for prevention or treatment of COVID-19 or testing 
of drugs biologics that have already demonstrated safety in humans in the prevention or treatment of COVID-19. Um, more topics, uh, disease productive models, predictive models, sorry, to make sure that we're one step ahead, patient monitoring, tracking, and management systems. And I will point out that although there is no government commitment to these funds just yet, MTech believes that there are tens of millions of dollars available to combat the, the virus, combat the disease, and uh, with follow-up funding. So uh, keep an eye out for, uh, for these opportunities as soon as they're announced. Last uh, but not least, the program that was issued by the CDC. Uh, and I know that it's in all caps, but uh, that has a lot to do with the fact that this is only open for 14 days until March 25th. And they urge applicants to submit white papers similar to what we see with, uh, with barter grants. In terms of the topics, uh, you can see that they are pretty much diverse. Uh, diagnostics, treatment, um, uh, characterization of, of the virus and the disease. And uh, as, as I'm sure you understand, time is definitely of the essence here. Uh, so that's that. Uh, thank you all for joining. And, and let me see, I see that I have a few questions. Just a minute. Okay, which of these programs are open to Canadian companies? So uh, excluding the SBR and SCTR programs, all of them are. And uh, an important element to bear in mind here is that even if you see a specific opportunities that is not open to a Canadian company, because the, the, the agencies are so interested in anything coronavirus now, try submitting an investigator initiated grant. Um, even if you do not see the word corona there, they'll be able to route it to the most relevant study section, the group of people uh, reviewing these grants, and, and hopefully, um, you know, that, that should definitely do it. Okay, let's see. Um, so, yeah, and also international companies, same answer, absolutely. Um, okay, and Another question I have, so I said that we should reply to all of them at the same time. Are there rules around that? So um, short answer is no. Uh, when you're sending out these applications, there's a tick box saying, yes, I submitted it to other agencies. And uh, that is definitely not an issue at all. The only uh, restriction is against double dipping. Uh, making sure that you do not receive an award for the same project from more than one agency. But in terms of submission, that is absolutely acceptable. Uh, can we get the recording of the deck? Absolutely. Everything will be available on our YouTube channel and you'll definitely get the deck uh, soon. Um, let's see what else. So I see a lot of questions regarding international applicants. These grants are definitely open to non-US organizations, non-US companies, um, and, and the motivation of the US government to award applicants from outside the US is that if you're able to help, generally speaking, and, and absolutely now, they are very happy to uh, uh, to award you. Uh, of course, they set uh, the their priorities. Congress, of course, uh, and and if you're able to to fit within what they want to see, they are always happy to help. Okay, and let's take one more. Uh, what is BARDA's definition to license project? Is it the same as FDA approved? Yes. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for uh, joining. Feel free to check out our uh, LinkedIn page, our uh, Twitter account, and our YouTube channel. All of this will be available online. And if you have any additional questions, 
uh, feel free to send me an email. Thank you so much. And uh, let's hope we're able to tackle this quickly and, and efficiently. Uh, and let's all be safe. Goodbye.